Let's give a very warm welcome to Lady Gaga. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, thank you. Did you design that? No, I didn't. This is a, a designer from London. But I sewed the hat backstage <laughs> by my... I just ripped a belt that I had apart. <laughs> what, to do the hat? You just did that yourself? Yeah, I just sewed it on top. Because you used to do all of your own costumes back before you were a massive superstar, didn't well, you? Well, I still do a lot of them myself. I do a lot of um, designing and I collaborate with young designers and designers who have been around for a while and I send them sketches. Um, but I also love to wear um, your creations that you send me and this is a creation by someone young that I really admire. Can you wear that again? Can you ever, you know, wear oh, the same? Oh, I'm outfit? going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I'm not wasteful with fashion. Okay, that's good to know. How's everyone? Everybody looks so nice. I know. This is your fan club. This is a little mini version of all your monsters. Oh, it looks so wonderful. Look at your outfit. Did you make that? Yeah, that makes sense. See? Talent. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Australia. It's been too long, I think, since your last it's visit. It's been really too long, and I'm just so happy. The minute I got off the plane, it was like the Australian sun was beaming on my face, and it felt so nice to be back. So beautiful here. This was one of the first countries that really adopted your music, wasn't yes. it? Yes, yes. It was uh, Australia and Canada. It happened around the same time. And since then, of course, I mean, you're a superstar around the world. You've, you've sold uh, five million copies of Born This Way in seven weeks. That must make you feel pretty good. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. I can't believe it. Gaga, why do you think you've struck such a, a chord in the market? Why do you think you've occupied this central spot? I think because in the beginning I didn't. I think I didn't strike any chords in the beginning. I think everyone was quite confused and got rejected a lot. The way that I sing, what I sing about, what I wear, who I am, my this is me. I was born this way. So uh, I will fight to the death to protect it. And I... I'm going to stop for one second because you've got a little bit of lipstick oh. on your teeth and I don't want to let you go on like that. <laughs> Fixed. Good woman. <laughs> Sisters. Sisters, that's, that's right. That's how it works. You look so nice. That suit, I see shoulders. Thank you. Oh, well, see, now you like a big shoulder, I don't you? I love a big shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I like a big shoulder for different reasons to you. I like a big shoulder because it makes your butt look smaller, but you don't have to worry about that. I like it because it's like a power suit. OK. Reminds me of the 80s. I'm obviously stuck in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> now, Born This Way is an anthem, I guess, for the sort of misfits and the misunderstood, which seems to me to be a special passion of yours. Would that be... Would that be fair to say? Well, yes and no. Because I certainly am passionate about social rights. Um, but on the adverse side, I think that it's people's perception that it's misfit. And uh, that's exactly what I want to change. Uh, what Born This Way is ultimately about is that we're all different. Uh, whether you dress like me or you dress like you, or you like this kind of music or that kind of music, maybe you believe in God, maybe you don't, maybe you believe in a completely different religion, or maybe you're just scientific or uh, really into politics. We're all born this way, and it's through our differences that we're exactly the same, because we're all different. I want to develop that discussion about social rights a little later, but first, we've got some, some members of the audience who'd like to ask you some questions. Can we hear from Trent, please? Trent. Hi, Gaga. Hi, Trent. Love you. Um, just wondering if you have any messages to young people of today that might be being bullied or um, picked on um, just because they're different? What I would say is that, well, a few things. One, I was bullied. I was terribly bullied. And there were days I didn't even want to go to school. And I used to cry in my mother's bathroom. And for myself, I was not brave enough to be the way that I am now when I was in high school. I dressed completely different. I talked completely different. I wrote completely different music. I was terrified of being who I wanted to be because 
I was always made fun of. And it required a few years and some really hard work. Um, so what I would tell all of those people that are asking that question is your mantra to yourself should be, be brave, be courageous. And someday your uniqueness and your individuality will be what you love about yourself. You have been searingly honest about some of your experiences at school. There was one that I read about recently, I'm not sure if it's true, where you said that you were once uh, set upon by a group of boys and girls and you were put in a, in a rubbish bin, in a trash yeah. can. Mm. I mean, the imagery of that, the powerlessness of that is extraordinary, but the imagery of that too, that you were put with the rubbish, how, how do you rise above that? How do you get strong out of something like that? Gosh, it just makes me even like, <gasps> when you ask me about it, because I just remember it so vividly. Yeah, they picked me up and threw me in the trash and they all started laughing. I just remember I was like trying so hard not to cry. My lip was quivering and I remember one girl looked at me just like, are you about to cry? You're so pathetic. And I didn't even tell my parents. I didn't even tell them because I was so ashamed because I just, I didn't want my mom or my dad to think of me as trash, the way that these kids were trying to make me feel. But all of these things made me stronger. They all made me stronger. And not only did they make me stronger, but today when I look out into that audience, you will never have a pop singer that loves you more than I do, I'll tell you that right now. Because I see myself in all of you. I think they're feeling that. Do you still feel, I mean, you're a superstar now, you're a long way from that little bullied schoolgirl, but do you still sometimes feel misunderstood? I mean, some of your detractors suggest that you're an attention seeker. I notice recently there were suggestions that you use the gay community to, to sell records. Do you see that as a form of bullying? Yes, criticism is a form of bullying, but it also comes with the territory of what I do. And let's be real, it's not like I'm singing in a white t-shirt about nothing, right? <laughs> so I sort of ask for it. I ask for it, and I don't feel misunderstood. Everyone will understand me in different ways, and I will sometimes put a giant piece of glass on my head and someone won't understand, and <laughs> I, you know, I don't even know that I do. Well, I do the things I do, it's just, I was born this way, this is who I am. You do have a massive following in the gay community and I know that you have been quite political in supporting um, gay rights overseas. There is an emerging movement here in Australia for the legalisation of gay marriage. Is that, is that something that you are going to push for or raise consciousness of while you're here? Yes. I'm very excited to be performing in town in the town hall. <laughs> Let's just say that would be a nice political moment for all of us. <laughs> Absolutely, and what I am so against is the way that certain laws or restrictions on certain things sends a message that one person is more valuable than another. The Prime Minister of our country is a, uh, is a, a woman, she's our first female Prime Minister, so she is already breaking with convention here. She, is, she lives in the lodge with her partner in a de facto relationship, but she still says that she believes that the marriage laws should stay traditional. She doesn't believe in gay marriage. Do you see an hypocrisy in that? Well, firstly, I think it's wonderful that you have a female running the place. <laughs> Wish that they did that in America, that would be nice. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it's hypocritical. Um, I, it's everyone's personal choice, uh, the way that they uh, live their lives, but I uh, do believe that it is wrong uh, to deny uh, people all over the country the ability to marry. Uh, I believe in marriage equality, so um, I would just encourage all of you to mobilize your voices um, so that the Prime Minister of Australia can hear you scream and speak and say, uh, we want to be fully equal. We want to get married. You come from a, a conservative a Catholic education, if you like. Do you consider yourself a, a practicing Catholic now or a lapsed yes. Catholic? Yes, lapsed, no. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Do you think there's no such thing as a lapsed Catholic? Do you think it... I've never really heard it said that way, but oh. it's quite funny. I'm going to use that as a joke. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, no, not that at all. That was one of my more serious questions, Gaga. <laughs> oh, really? No, I'm joking. I'm actually quite traditional. I mean, I know everyone's at home ro all rolling their eyes <laughs> and my uh, teal blonde locks, but I am quite traditional. I came from a... I come from a really strong Italian family. I'm still a practicing Catholic. I still pray. I pray every day. We pray before every show as a cast. Um, and uh, I say in Born This Way, God makes no mistakes. And I mean it. I wrote those words myself. Do your parents ever say to you, Gaga, you've gone too far with that performance or with those lyrics? Do they? No. In fact, my mother loves black Jesus. If, listen, if, a quote right there. if he was not who we were taught that he would be, would you not believe? That's the point of the song. If You're a very sensible young woman now. When you first left home... It's good that she said sensible after that. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you're, you're impressing that upon everybody, and I, I think probably to hear you speak is perhaps a little different to the reputation that maybe precedes you. I hope that we're introducing people to oh, who you, you are tonight. Um, you did go through a little wild phase when you first moved out of home, and I understand you, your dad had to sort of pull you up when you After. got a little mixed up. With no, drugs. before, too. Oh, <laughs> man, I was hell on wheels. <laughs> Don't be hell on wheels. <laughs> Do you, in, in terms of, I, I mean, I know you've dabbled with drugs. How do you answer that question now? I mean, have you stepped away from all of that now? Yes, no drugs for me. I drink. I <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, we all. Listen, I had some Jameson last night and I looked at the opera house for about three hours out my window and I don't feel sorry about it. Uh, but no drugs at all, no. I, that was like my former life. I went through it uh, young and I got over it and I'm not at all interested. I would not do anything to compromise what I have now with my fans, not one thing. Let's talk about clothes now. How important is your look, is the costume to your performance, do you think? Not at all. <laughs> I care not for fashion. <laughs> because <laughs> I can tell that. This is yeah. just a little something you this threw is my together. Do you, do you <laughs> I mean you are where you are now and it would be impossible to knock you off your perch. But was it was it a necessary gimmick, if you like, as an attention getter when you were starting out? Has an attention getter. I like attention. No. Um, <laughs> but I like attention for theater. And I like um, being an entertainer. I love fashion, though. <laughs> how do you keep raising the bar, though? I mean, how do you beat an egg or a, a lobster hat or a meat dress? Uh, I mean, aren't you going to reach the end and say, I, I can't do any better, I've done it all? I don't really view it as a contest. Although it would be quite funny to see that the, the egg have a boxing match with the meat. <laughs> be like a breakfast. Uh, I don't see it as a contest. I, you know, I know it sounds quite silly, but I really do wake up in the morning just like you all do and go, oh, I want to wear that. I just might be taking it a bit further. <laughs> <laughs>